Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is March 9th, and this is the EU US edition. Uh, with me today, we have Mark White, Wait, and Bruno Rockton. Thank you for joining us always. I appreciate it. Uh, today on the agenda, we have some action items. Uh, there's a couple of pull requests to review, um, but nothing too urgent. Uh, we have a few blog posts that have been published, um, one by Bruno about the uh, mini Jenkins control controller that he made. Uh, there's the Atlassian sponsorship blog post that Mark has written. And we have uh, the Jenkins Awards. Our, the voting period is now open. Uh, and the Jenkins February newsletter, which is now published on the blog. I just need to update the link here. Uh, talk, uh, this, we'll have a short talk about moving the docs office hours time to potentially earlier in the day. Um, just a quick note on the LTS release this week. Uh, weekly change log will be reviewed. Documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17 with Debian 12. This is something we've been talking about for a handful of sessions now. Uh, improving the end of life notifications. Um, this is something that we've discussed in a, the last two meetings or so, and we'll revisit again today. Uh, prep for the CentOS uh, 7 end of life. Uh, this is something again that we've been discussing for the last handful of weeks, uh, and we'll just touch base on that. Uh, and if we have time, or if there are any other questions, we can also go into a quick 10 minute uh, intro to Jenkins guide. I think this was a remnant from the uh, Asia Docs Office Hours meeting previously. Um, so I'll remove it for now, but if we want to uh, take a look, we can put it back on there. Um, is there anything else that I've missed or anything else we wanna make sure is on the agenda today? Nope, okay. All right, uh, so um, there have been a couple of plug, uh, pull requests lately just uh, from new contributors adding a lot of content. It's somewhat challenging and um, it's, it's a lot, and they've done a lot of work to push this through and submit it. Um, I'm doing my best to get through them and verify, but I'm still learning a lot about Jenkins, so sometimes I need a little assistance and help, um, but that's why we have a full team, and that's why we're all working on this together. Uh, the first blog post that I wanted to highlight is, again, Bruno's blog post that he had contributed um, about the mini Jenkins uh, instance that he created. This is really cool. Um, this is something that he brought to Boston as well. So uh, I was able to show it off to the attendees, which is really neat. Um, Bruno, do you want to speak to it for a second or give us a little uh, insight here? Yeah, I'll try to be quick because don't get me started on this contraption. <laughs> it's just a Jenkins instance. By instance, I don't mean a cluster. It's just three agents and a controller, all of them being screwed to uh, strange things which is 3D printed and one of the um, uh, agent is an ARM 32 bits, another one is an ARM 64 bits and the last one is a RISC-V. That was just an experiment because RISC-V is not a platform which is officially supported by Jenkins and even not by Temurin which we use. So all of this is very experimental but I had tons of fun uh, designing the 3D thingy and <laughs> install Linux on the various boards and use some um, Pine64 uh, power supply and so on and had tons of fun talking about that at the first damn Jenkins booth. So all of that, I had way too much fun uh, <laughs> with this project and it's not finished yet. I still have to add some displays and yeah, lots of things. So I also have um, YouTube channel uh, where I do regular live streams on this thing and I write some blog posts from time to time and so on. Anyway, it's not finished. It's still <laughs> in the making and it's a work in progress, but uh, I learned some things about Jenkins, Tamarin, uh, RISC-5. I learned tons of things, so that's the beauty of it. I'm growing <laughs> with that small project. This is really cool, Bruno. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh... Just I love the fact that we're pulling back the curtain a little bit to share uh, your kind of like what's going on here in the background and um, your thoughts on it. It's really awesome and I think is incredibly valuable, even if it's still a work in progress. There's so much to learn, like you said. So, well, thank yeah. you so much for your feedback. And I have another article in the writing uh, <laughs> regarding Minigen once again and RISC-V, a little bit more information about my progress. 
Now, thanks yeah. a lot for the shootout. Of course. And uh, I'm hoping that we can have that other mini gem blog post uh, published in, on the site by tomorrow end of day. Um, we do have scale this weekend. That's not something that's on the agenda, but I do want to call out um, scale. Uh, 2023 is this weekend. Mark Waite and Alyssa Tong are going to be attending and um, be uh, be representing Jenkins and uh, just really excited and looking forward to the next couple of days with that. Um, and the idea is we'll have that mini, that other mini gen blog post up so that it's available during scale. Thanks a lot for your work. Thank you. Uh, uh, so moving on, the next blog post is a small blog post that Mark had written just thanking and sharing our gratitude to Atlassian for sponsoring, continuing to sponsor, sponsor Jenkins and provide a JIRA so uh, that we can continue to track issues and uh, progress Jenkins development. So you need to scroll down a little bit. The even more mm -hmm. important thing is the upgrade schedule. Ah, yes. There will be a little bit of downtime while the Linux Foundation installs the new thing. Mm -hmm. upgrades us. It's a license upgrade, if I understand correctly. And so the, it, we don't expect it to take a lot of time, but they have to do some work and the work may have some downtime. Okay. Good to know. Thank you very much, Mark. And it looks like it'll be later on the day for most folks. And uh, Right. So Bruno, Bruno, you should not be working on Jenkins issues at this that time because that's 1 a.m. your time Saturday oh. morning. <laughs> So no, I will be sleeping, hopefully. Good. Good choice. <laughs> Great. Cool. All right. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that. Um, and again, thank you to Atlassian for providing and sponsoring Jenkins with all of the resources that you do. This is great and uh, makes our work very possible. Uh, next item on the list, uh, the Jenkins Contributor Awards uh, voting is officially open now as of just yesterday, Wednesday, March 8th. Uh, voting is going to be available and open until March 28th, so the end of this month. Um, and we have our list of awards and candidates to choose from. Um, all of these people are more than worthy of these sort of awards and even further. So this is a great opportunity to share our thanks and gratitude and appreciation for them. Um, it's going to take place via a Google form uh, that is linked here in the blog post. Um, this is only for the Jenkins Awards. The other projects and the CD Foundation themselves have a separate form for their awards and their voting process. Um, you can get that information from the uh, CD Foundation site and uh, repository where their issues are being hosted. Um, Tecton are hosting their own issues and then uh, everything else would be falling under the uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation if I'm not mistaken. So um, they are the foremost authority on any kind of information or insight you need. Um, but for Jenkins, we have uh, all of these housed in our repository and the Google form. Um, so nominations closed last Friday. Again, voting opened yesterday and will close on the 28th. And then uh, the winners will be announced at CDCon this year in May. Um, so that'll be a really nice time to just look back at everything and then look towards the future by sharing our gratitude and appreciation and thanks to these people. Um, in the realm of security, cont contributions, advocating for Jenkins, these are all hugely important. Uh, and we need, we appreciate and uh, want to just highlight all the work that's done here. Uh, and then the last item here in the list is the February newsletter. Um, so again, this did just go live not too long ago. Um, quick thanks again to Roxanne from the C CD Foundation for creating these header images, really nice and uh, make the newsletter pop a lot more. Uh, and yeah, we have some highlights from FOSDEM 2023. If you haven't seen the blog post, uh, some update on Google Summer of Code and Jenkins mentoring uh, in our participation. Look at all the lovely mentors and participants. Great. Uh, our Jenkins Awards, again, they're open to vote. Uh, lots of infrastructure updates for the platform and some highlights of the different blog posts that we had last month as well. Um, some governance info and a bunch of information about platform updates and uh, image container image updates. So thank you to Bruno for all of that. More uh, UI UX security, 
Um, and thanks, Kevin, for uh, contributing the security update this time around. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to need to fix that, but that's okay. But um, yeah, the February newsletter is live now. You can go check it out and see all the wonderful highlights from the past month from Jenkins. Uh, next up on the agenda, uh, some, something that Mark and I have just been discussing, um, but with daylight savings time in the U.S. being a thing, um, we were thinking about potentially moving the docs office hours to an earlier time frame, uh, mainly so that we can accommodate everyone appropriately. Uh, if this is held later on in the day for me, that's going to be, I, I don't feel comfortable with that. That's too late for anyone in the EU, such as Bruno, that might want to attend. Um, and I think I'm there's confused. a way to make this fair. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, because of a daylight savings time and so on. So you say that you think of making it uh, earlier, but will it be really earlier for me once you have changed uh, time because of daylight savings? And two weeks from now, uh, will it be still earlier or later? Oh, that's a mess. <laughs> so, so that's why the Jenkins project states all its meeting times in UTC. Oh, mm -hmm. so really earlier because they are unaffected by a governmental manipulation of time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll look. I have a look at my calendar and see if it's earlier or later for me, uh, and it will change for me two weeks from now. Anyhow, but, uh, yeah. The, the open the open question is: we could go one hour earlier than the current meeting time. We could go two hours earlier than the current meeting time. This meeting time should serve us, those of us who attend. There's no shame in us saying we want to meet an hour earlier, two hours earlier, three hours earlier. Those are all times that work for the people who participate. No shame in us saying whatever whatever works for us. Yeah. Um, so it's still US and EU. Uh, right. Docs right. Office hour. Yeah. But okay. but the reality is we don't have any California based or any West Coast based. You know, California, um, Oregon, or or Washington based contributors. We also don't have any contributors from Alaska, which is even further west, uh, or from Hawaii, which is really further west. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so I think it's perfectly fine for us to say, let's pick a time that works for us. Fine, thank you. Yeah, and the, and the idea, like Mark said, Bruno, is more just to move the meeting a little bit earlier in general. It's not... Um, Specifically because daylight savings time is just something I noticed in my calendar. Okay. Thought maybe we could just avoid all this, um, but yeah, we'll figure it out. It's an open-ended question. Nothing's guaranteed right now, so no worries. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda. So this week, uh, when yesterday we had LTS version two point three eight seven point one release. Uh, this was released successfully. Big thank you and um, appreciation to everyone that worked on this. This has been uh, a lot of work over the last handful of months and a lot of updates and changes made it into this uh, LTS baseline. Um, and we also had 2.375.4 release yesterday as well as uh, weekly 2.394. Um, and thank you to the security team because uh, they took the uh, lead on these change logs and getting these releases uh, out since they did have security updates to push through. Um, just super, super thanks for their work and help on all of these and getting these things put together. Uh, there were tons of UI updates, notification updates. Uh, we had, we moved the, we transitioned from Antler 2 to Antler 4, which is a lot of work and a lot of um, just a, a lot of future um, thought going into this. So, huge amounts of work. I can't stress that enough. Um, and yeah, there's plenty more. Um, you can check out the change log on, on the Jenkins site uh, and the upgrade guide as well. There's lots of stuff to go through. Uh, we also have the next weekly coming up. So 2.395, uh, the change log will be reviewed tomorrow and Monday prior to its release next week. So uh, that and will be... Oh, great. That one's that one's a bigger release because it's two weeks worth of changes, right? 2.3, 2.394 was only 2.393 plus security fixes. 2.395 will therefore be two weeks of weekly changes collected together. Got it. Good to know. Thanks very much, Mark. 
So, uh, so that'll be a little bit more work than before, but I'm pretty sure I can handle that. Um, next on the list, the documentation transition from Java 11 to Java 17 uh, with the release of Debian 12. So uh, Debian 12, AKA Bookworm is set to release in April or May, 2023. Um, at that point in time, we are going to transition the install docs for Jenkins from Java 11 to Java 17. Uh, Java 11 is continue, going to continue to be supported. That's not going to be dropped until uh, next year at the very earliest. So uh, there is no uh, stress or any reason to worry here. Uh, we just want to encourage people to use Java 17 as their own baseline. Uh, it provides full functionality. It's fully supported now. Uh, and just uh, it, the end of life is going to happen for Java 11. So the sooner we move towards Java 17, uh, the less concern people will have to have when it does come to that time. Um, yeah. The so, reason, or go ahead, Mark. Go ahead. I was going to venture a, 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 a proposal for a possible change of idea. Okay. Okay, we framed it as Debian 12, and mm -hmm. Debian 12 was the catalyst. But realistically, I think for the Jenkins project, doing it in April or May, whether or not Debian 12 releases, makes sense because we want to make this transition. Debian 12 was the catalyst. I, I won't dispute that. But mm -hmm. I think maybe it's time for us to say, hey, we're just going to set a date for the transition. We're going to do the transition because, because we know this transition is needed. Would that do any objections from you, Kevin? I, you're the docs oh. officer, so this is me sort of weighing in. But no, not at all. I have no objection to that whatsoever. I think it's, I mean, the way we've been talking about it, Debian 12 is kind of like you said, uh, whether or not that's part of it is uh, not as big a factor. More importantly, moving to Java 17, transitioning the documentation to use it. Um, I think all of those things are more than enough reason to just go ahead and transition it regardless. Cool. Okay. Good. That's one. Yeah, I'm on board. And Bruno, you're okay with the same concept? Uh, yeah, of course. It was uh, I need time to find the mute button, but yes, of course, <laughs> it, it does make sense. Of course, I have not seen anybody complaining about Jenkins does not work with GDK 17. So it does work. It does work for infra. It works for CR. It works just about everywhere. So yes, let's go and move to GDK 17 in the documentation. Great. Perfect. Uh, and just something that we had discussed before, uh, I did email Tim Jacon to let him know he's aware of the transition and totally on board with it. So we have uh, the release officer uh, okaying everything. We are more than good to go at this point. So it'll just be a matter of actually performing the transition. Uh, next up on the agenda, so this is another, again, another topic we've been discussing, improving the end of life notifications. Um, this has been a topic because we've been discussing the end of life for various products and uh, platforms. Ubuntu 18.04 specifically reaches end of life uh, next month. Um, so uh, we are looking at various ways to uh, not only make this transition easier, but alert everyone to the transition itself and or the end of life uh, deprecation, whatever you want to call it at that point. Um, so things like a blog post, things like making sure we tweet about it, uh, providing announcements ahead of time, notifications in Jenkins or on Jenkins.io. Um, there's a lot of places that we can actually make this happen. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out the best way to go about it. Um, we do have endoflife.date as a resource that contains all the end of life dates or end of life dates for a lot of products, if not most of them that uh, we use and work with. So great little resource there. It's got an API that can be connected into a uh, system so we can get some kind of automation going on there potentially in the future. Um, but the bottom line is making sure that people are aware the end of life is coming and uh, in a way that's not uh, alarming. This is something that needs to be uh, addressed and taken care of by each user in their own system. Uh, but we, we should do our best to get, make that information available as well. 
Um, we have been discussing a Jenkins enhancement proposal to track all of this. Uh, so discussing various uh, deprecations and end of life, such as the Blue Ocean container image, the CentO7 container image, which we've been discussing um, independently of this, uh, and the Arch Linux aging container. Uh, these are all a little bit older and are uh, going to be hitting end of life sooner than later. So if the, so the idea is we'll have this proposal, we can track all of that. And uh, as we move through, we can note down all the changes being made. Um, yeah, is there anything else on that, Mark or Bruno, that you'd like to add? I know this has been a conversation we've been having in um, various places. So yeah, I, I think the next step is the Jenkins enhancement proposal. And it it needs to I think the challenge will be expressing in a way that it identify the use cases and addre actually address those use cases with the proposal, because the container images are quite different in terms of how we would solve them than an operating system deprecation, right? A container image, we could see a file on the file system. The operating system, we really have to ask questions from inside Jenkins core, which operating system are we on? Uh, and and that may cause more more concern or more bristling from people saying, "Hey, why are we embedding that kind of knowledge into Jenkins Core?" And the answer is so that we can tell them that their operating system that they're running on is end of life to the Jenkins project. Great, and um, yeah, and I can imagine that there's a big difference between the container images and what they rely on, their dependencies, all the stuff that. Um, kind of make them up are gonna it's all gonna be very different so i right. can see it being a case-by-case -case situation well and this the right. agent container image is yet another condition where we don't the con the code the controller code doesn't naturally run on the agent we have to do a, a remote call to execute something on the agent and so finding out this detecting that a deprecated agent is running is may not be a Jenkins core topic that may be a version node monitor topic and that's okay too. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, yeah. All right. And the last thing on the agenda, and this is uh, going off the previous uh, points, but um, we have been discussing uh, preparing for the CentOS 7 uh, end of life. Um, Mark has been proposing this and uh, explaining why this should happen sooner than later uh, for a little bit now. Everything makes sense. Uh, it's relying on ancient versions of things that um, we don't use. Uh, it's been in maintenance mode since 2020 and the end of life is gonna be happening next June. Um, it's already not supported by various uh, functions and uh, pieces. And so it's time. And uh, the idea that Mark, has been, Mark is proposing is that we uh, submit a JET to actually just uh, accelerate this end of life and get this um, to the point where we can say it's deprecated sooner than later. So um, the JEP still has to be created, but uh, the, it makes all the sense in the world based on what Mark's shared. And you know, these are very old versions. So. Uh, yeah, it's time to move on. Uh, CentOS 8 is fully there and up and running, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So um, no reason to not move forward. Yeah, CentOS 8 or CentOS 8, no, it doesn't exist nope. any longer. But nope. there are plenty of Red Hat based, Red Hat 8 based systems that are available. Uh, if you want to go to something that's slightly more modern, there's also Red Hat based Red Hat 9 that is now available. <laughs> that is significantly more modern and, and both of them are a better choice than CentOS 7 for sure. Yeah. What I heard with the recent version of CentOS and Red Hat is that there was a change of philosophy, I may say. Yes. You know, downstream versus upstream and that could be a problem for users, but. Correct. And, and so CentOS, CentOS may not be the place that they choose to go. They would probably choose Rocky or Alma or Oracle or Red Hat or Amazon Linux 2023 or all sorts of other alternatives, yeah. Right, and uh, some of those things uh, have been put in the documentation um, as of this moment, but uh, a lot more work needs to be done to make sure that it's across the board. Uh, that'll be something I work on with uh, Mark's guidance and we get taken care of as well. 
Um, so that covers everything I had on the agenda. Uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to share, put on the agenda, or ask, or mention? No. All, All right, right then. Well, thank you as always for attending and, and uh, joining here. Appreciate it. Uh, the video recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. And uh, yeah, take care. Have a great rest of your day. And thanks as always. Thanks. Thanks. And Mark, safe travels. Thank you. Yes. Enjoy scale, Mark. That'll be a fun time. All right.